Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson. We are live and direct from the 2015 African Liberation Day, Birmingham, England. And I support 100% GK TV. That's right, Got Kush TV. For the latest conscious information, trending news, and information that you can use, make sure you check out Got Kush TV. GK TV, they got that information you need. And the parents I speak to every day, 13, 14, why? When your child starts secondary school, they start in the top set. They are top of their game, very, very highly intelligent. Once they start going to school, they start growing. And you've got these middle class white teachers coming from outside of London, coming in, all of a sudden your child is now a threat to them. Because they've asked the teacher, why are we not celebrating Black History Month? Why are we not doing things that represent me? Why are we not doing and talking about people who look like me? Then your child is now labelled in the staff room and these are black teachers that will come and tell you the same thing. So with regards to that, then your child is pushed out of school, however the school's being still paid for your child to attend the school, but your child is not allowed to attend the school. They go to some place down the road where they're doing manual labour. Now that manual labour is no use to the British economy because we have Eastern Europeans here in the UK actually doing those jobs for three, four, five pounds an hour, whereas your son or daughter, if he wants to leave home or do anything, needs to earn more than that. If he's not earning the money or she's not earning the money she needs, what does she do? When they're not in school or if they, they do go to these sideline schools, if they fall out, there's nothing that the state will do. They don't actually care. You can write to everybody, you can speak to everybody. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from hearsay or what I read in a book. I'm speaking from experience of what I saw happen to my son. Go from a top, top grade right down to not attending school for 14 months to being threatened by the state that if my son does not attend school, I will be arrested. I said, bring the police to my house, please do, because I want to see what you're going to do because you have actually failed my child. But what they actually do is want to actually push them into the drug system, into going on the streets and X, Y, Z, and then where do they end up? In the prisons where they're drugging them. There was, there was, there was, there was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu where every race came to get books For my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is This is GK TV, we are back here again We're in the middle of the country, up here in Birmingham at PACM 40th anniversary and it's been on fire today We've had some great speakers out there, people all around We've had the crowd just moving you know what these events are like, just beautiful. The, the key point is the people. And when you look across the crowd, you see them colours and just African culture. Listen, don't mess around with that. But right now, we're here at GKTV Spot. We're here with Cheryl Phoenix. This is education champion right now. She's fighting a cause. She ain't ramping when it comes to that cause of dealing with education or the miseducation of youth in the UK school system and exposing what's going on there. And dealing with schooling right now, we've got all the way from the United States, all the way from the US of A, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, he is here doing his thing. He just busts up a, a, a seriously heavy speech out there right now and getting that message across and especially with the school program. So that's why we've got these two people here because it's relating, because the same messed up school program, what's going on, given to us by these uh, Euro European mindsets, these um, recessive types of education which is based on the destruction, emasculation and total degradation of Nubian men like children uh -huh, uh -huh. across the world. And not only not only within the Western world, but then taking those systems across to our lands where our people coming from. So the generations of people where we're coming from don't even have a chance. Thank so you. these are two pioneers in this uh, form of education. So we're going to speak to them both right now. We're going to start off with Cheryl, we have Umar, uh, Dr. Umar waiting in the wings. We're going to speak up with Cheryl. Pleasure to have you up here. Thank you very much. Recently you had the UK... Um, the Black Child Agenda. And that was part one. On, on fire. I know we've got part two coming up. Part two's coming up this very, weekend. Very, very soon. How are you finding, you know, you're pumping this message, you're trying mm. to educate, you're trying to educate, you're trying to get parents educating, you're linking up with as many people as you can, mm -hmm. trying to get them educated. How's the fight? The fight, we're still fighting. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing battle. However, the message is getting out there. The interesting thing is through our marketing efforts, through what we're doing, mm -hmm. we're finding parents coming forward. We're finding people whose children have been taken away coming forward. We're finding people who have been forced on 
drugs coming forward mm -hmm. and they're speaking about it. We're finding children coming forward and talking about their experiences. We're finding children that have been taken from their homes and these are 16 and 17 year olds mm -hmm. coming forward and wanting to be at the event and tell their story. The one that we did on the 10th of May in Brixton um, was an eye opener for a lot of parents because mm -hmm. some of the issues that we're facing in the UK that the schools to prison pipeline terminology mm -hmm. itself in the UK is quite a new one. Mm -hmm. However, in the USA, it's not new at all. With regards to having police in the schools, mm -hmm. with regards to having social workers in the schools, with regards to stop and search in the schools, mm -hmm. with regards to the criminalization of our children in schools, mm -hmm. to us in the UK, it's a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for a long time, but we haven't actually put it down to something. We haven't had a terminology for it, but yet they've been gearing up our black boys in particular for the prison system. They've been drugging our children for a very long time. And then we have the issue again, as I mentioned earlier, and I asked the question to Brother Umar about the secret adoptions. Now this is an issue that a lot of people and a lot of parents aren't aware about but it's something that needs to be highlighted even more. Um, so with regards to the black child agenda, as a mother myself, as someone who's seen what the system has done to black boys in particular, with regards, so you have your son who goes to school when they're between the age of zero to 11, and they're fine, they're at the top of their grades, they do everything well. As soon as they get to secondary school, what on earth is happening that's so bad that you've got these aggressive, angry young black boys on the streets, rather than putting out their aggression on the football field or in the rugby pitch, they're actually killing each other on the streets. And then with that, they end up in the prison system and the juvenile system. System and they're drugging them in their foods and you know there's, there's it's like there's so much that it is it's such a big subject that I don't think just having one event I don't think having two events three or four or five events is enough we need to actually get parents engaged we need to make sure parents are setting up their own events to educate their local community to make sure that the black child agenda is the top of their agenda because you're producing black children I mean and that's a key point when we talk about black children because you know a lot of people we become living in this society a very selfish me 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 society mm -hmm. whereas you know we've got generations of people having children but not really looking at the value and the asset of what mm -hmm. these children are and we just accept the status quo you know send them to school accept what goes on within the school system and it's, you know especially across the usa we saw this thing going on and i remember you, you'd watch the program when we was younger growing up and you'd see the metal detectors in the schools you know on the tv programs and then i remember seeing the first metal detectors come up but you didn't really correlate the two uh -huh. coming together uh -huh. okay now in in the united states obviously you've got exactly the same situation going on and where we're just starting to become aware of this what's been going on for a long time as, as Cheryl said it's being termed in the united states how long has this been going on and what has been the ditch they always say the uk is like x amount of years behind yeah so what is the detrimental effect which is now bred to and led to in the united states which you can see from your experience of speaking to people over here, where we're going? Well, I would say that one of the biggest outcomes of the school to prison pipeline would be the mass incarceration complex. Uh -huh. uh, the failure of the schools directly feed the jails. Mm -hmm. You understand? In fact, the schools are being designed to fail to feed the jail. And all of this is an outgrowth of the fact that the American social order no longer needs African people in order to function. Uh -huh. Schools were created because capitalism put pressure on the government to produce a minimally educated, mm -hmm. low-wage earner. Mm -hmm. School was never about college. School was never about opening your own business. School was about learning how to read, write, and do math so you can work for the corporation. Now the corporations are being sent overseas. NAFTA, Trans-Pacific Partnership, America is shipping millions of jobs over to Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. So if there's no jobs, and school exists to prepare you to work, but there's no jobs, then what now is the prerogative of even having a school? You don't have a reason for school now in America, unless you redirect the focus from preparing children to succeed to preparing children to fail. And now the modus operandi of the American public school system is to prepare the children to fail intentionally so they can feed the jail. We say Tendai Marbury, tell a devil man them can't harm me. Right now with Aid Marcus Garvey, Lena P. Aura Safari. Right now